Okay, got a nice piece of bisque here that was thrown by John Arnott. And I'm going to be decorating it. I'm gonna center this with a, the logo on a line here on the decorating wheel. And I'm just taking a damp sponge and getting some of the dust off it. It's very important to do this because the dust uh, causes problems in the glaze. We want the bisque to be as clean as possible. Now I've done this a few times, so it's probably good. Okay, so I use a method that I've kind of come up with, which is basically I take a piece of tape and draw what I want on it, pull it off, um, or use the um, X-Acto knife, cut it out, and then I have a little decal. I know there are lots of better ways to do this, I imagine, but this is how I've done it. Now I take my little decal of the heron, and I'm going to place it kind of in the center here. Oh, he's not quite right, so I'll tip him a little bit. So he's looking down into the water, maybe. And here I could take my damp sponge and just push him right down into the bisque. There we go. Just one more time. Just clean it off. Oops. Make sure his beak is there. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, start putting some slip on. This is a blue... A real pretty blue slip and uh, let's see how do I want to do this here I guess I'll do the horizon line oops dripping the horizon line is going to be right there and this is like I said it's a very pretty blue and I'm just gonna lay on the colors like that starting at the top, bringing it down. If it doesn't flow, then I like to try to put a little water in it, see if it'll flow better like that. And then there's some streaks in the sky. I'm gonna make this one kind of fast because I meant to do a different pattern for this. Now I'm going to come in with a teal color and lay on top of that. And that is a, the way the colors, this these slip colors sort of combine. It's quite nice. It turns into a nice pretty teal color. And I've left some white areas up here so the teal will shine through on top of the, on top of the blue. I've done this for quite a long time, 12 years now, so I just wanted to get a little bit of footage of me doing this because I have a feeling that it might be interesting to some people. Okay, so the, the more I lay on this teal on top of the blue, the darker the color becomes. I'm just putting a border with the black slip, top and bottom. It looks pretty if you just let it um, gra graduate down or gradate down. It's pretty too. Okay, now, uh, here we go. Here comes the pattern, which is in the background, there's a line of of distant shore. As I'm doing this, I just realized that I missed a little bit of, there was a little lip in this 
I want to get some of the glaze up in that little lip that I missed there. there. Okay, now back to the pattern. Okay, so I like to put in um, uh, pretty close. I like to put a little island in here and a tree. These are our flagged St. Lawrence River trees. I think they grow in a lot of different places, but I always think of them as St. Lawrence River or, you know, at uh, Southern Ontario along the lake, Southern Providence of, of Ontario, Canada. A lot of the, a lot of the, the group of seven artists in Canada uh, always had those trees that were like the jack pine. Anyway, I'm just going to put in some trees on this island. Kind of dotting and this black is really, um, works really well. This black slip you can get some good detail. And then again, the distant shore on the backside. And then I put in two islands generally. There's a little rock, some grass on it, tree growing. I am not going to say happy little tree. <laughs> the wind outside my studio here. It sounds like the wind is bending these trees over. <laughs> okay, so we get the idea. I also come in and do a little bit more on the rocks later. But for right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna call that a, a day on the trees. For I'll may do more off camera, but let me just come in and start working on the. I'm gonna put this heron into some reeds. There's the water, and I always that blue tape is really nice because it's it's uh, resisting the the um, glaze. So I can go right up to it with the black slip and like that. Okay, now I can take the resist off, peel that right off. And what it leaves is a nice white. I always save it because I can usually get uh, two or three, maybe even more some days if I'm careful can get more uses out of that. Now I usually take um, a little exacto because there's a little ridge on there and I don't want that on there. So, and then I give it some legs and maybe give it a little bit of feathering in the front here. Take down that ridge, otherwise it will, it'll, you'll feel it on the glaze when we put the clear glaze on and fire it. Okay, now I'm just coming in and just doing that. Just a very light, light blue. I never used to do that, but I keep bumping into these blue herons out on the river when I'm kayaking, and they are so blue. It's crazy. I never used to do it thinking, oh, well, they're not really all that blue. But as I've looked at them through the years, I realize, yeah, they're pretty blue. Hence the great blue heron. Now I do the beak first, and then I come in and give it its round head on the black and just a hint of an eye. Sometimes they look a little meaner than others. Today he looks pretty sweet. And then I'm just outlining that neck and giving it a little feather in the front. It's real simple. This is pottery. This isn't like a painting on a canvas. You've got to do the best you can, you know, and sometimes less is more. 
it just looks nicer if it's a nice clean design. I mean, it is a fussy design, obviously. I'm putting a, a bit great blue heron on a vase. It's not going to be cinchy. Um, but that's how that kind of comes out. And then I go back through, and this is, for me, this is the very relaxing, fun part, is doing the water. And I usually give a little bit more of the black uh, under the islands because there would be a little bit darker island, a dark, darker water or a different reflection. I also like to put in just a, a little bit. I've done this before in another video. And a little St. Lawrence River skiff, which is a double-ended rowing skiff that the guides back in the day used. Well, people still use them. And they're a rowing skiff that's very good for the river goes through the river nicely okay and as you get further away on the horizon the waves get a little smaller there's a formula for that I don't know what it is I just do it by eyeball Sadly, I do not have one of these finished right uh, at hand, but uh, this pattern is we called um, the um, twilight pattern, which was just a shades of blue and the black. And it looks very pretty when it's fired and all glazed and shiny. It looks really good. I might, oh, I don't have one real close by, but that's that. It didn't take too long, did it? 